Hello everyone! Welcome back to Jacoby's Library. I am Zach the Winter Warlock with Storm Gaming Alliance. And if you don't already know, in this series, we are reading through all the books I've collected in my vanilla Skyrim Let's Play, The Adventures of Jacoby. Be sure to check that out. Today's book is uh, The Black Arts on Trial. It is about a new um, head magister in the Mages Guild, uh, sort of having an intellectual debate on the merits of necromancy. Uh, it was actually a pretty interesting read, so I hope you enjoy the story. Without further ado, The Black Arts on Trial. The Black Arts on Trial. History. Necromancy, commonly called the Black Arts, has a history that dates back before recorded time. Virtually all the earliest laws of the land make mention of it as expressly forbidden on pain of death. Independent practitioners of the arts of sorcery, however, continued its study. The Sigic Order on the Isle of Arteum, precursor to our own Mages Guild, also forbade its use, not only because it was dangerous, but their belief in the holy and unholy ancestor spirits made it heretical. Again, despite this, we hear many stories of students and masters who ignored the stricture. When Vanis Galarian left Arteum, he may have disagreed with the Sigics on much, but he also refused to allow necromancy to be taught in the guild. Almost 1100 years have passed since the time of Vanis Galarian, and there have been many arch magisters to lead his guild. The question of necromancy has continued to be asked. The strictures against it in the guild have never been lifted, but attitudes about it have shifted back and forth over the years. Some arch magisters have been inclined to ignore it entirely, some have fought very actively against it, and still other arch magisters have been rumored to be necromancers themselves. In my new role as arch magister of the Mages Guild, it is my duty to set policy on this matter. Though I have my own opinions on the Black Arts, I took counsel with two of the most learned mages in the Empire, Magister Voth Carlis of Corinth and Magister Yolasita Grakog of Orsinium, and we debated for two days. What follows are summaries of the salient points of the debate, arguments and counterarguments, which led to the resolution of the Mages Guild on the subject of necromancy. Argument. Argument by Master Grokog. Necromancy is poorly understood. We will not make it disappear by ignoring it. As an intellectual institution dedicated to the study of the magical arts and sciences, we have obligations to the truth. Censoring ourselves in our scholarship is antithetical to our mission of neutrality and ob objectivity. Counterargument by Master Carlos. The Mages Guild must balance its quest for knowledge with responsible caution and ethical standards. It is not censoring a student's course of study to have him proceed cautiously and with purity of purpose. It is not limiting a student's freedom to set rules and boundaries. Indeed, it is essential. Argument by Master Carlos Necromancy is an anathema throughout the civilized world. To embrace it publicly, the Mages Guild would inspire fear and hostility in the populace at large. Vanis Galarian wanted his institution to be unlike the Sigic Order, which was elitist and separatist. We ignore public opinions at our own risk. We will certainly lose our characters in many places, including, very likely, the whole of Morrowind, where sentiment against necromancy is very strong. Counterargument by Master Grokog Yes, we should be sensitive to the concerns of the community but they should not and must not dictate our scholarship. Necromancer, to many uneducated persons, simply means an evil mage. It is madness to limit our work because of prejudices and half-formed understanding. It is an affront to the purpose of objective study to turn our back on a subject merely because of public opinion. Argument by Master Grokog Necromancers are the scourge of Tamriel. Whether operating independently or in concert with the sloads of King of Worms' Menomarco, they are responsible for many horrors, animated zombies and skeletons and other forms of the undead. To best combat this menace, we must understand the powers of the necromancer, and we cannot do that by restricting our study of the black arts. Counter-argument by Master Carlos. No one is disputing the threat of the black arts. In fact, 
That is the very essence of my argument against the Mages Guild making it a school to be taught in our initiates. We can and should know what our enemy is capable of, but we must be careful not to step into a trap of looking too deep into his ways and making those ways our own. We do no one any good if by studying the evil ways we become evil ourselves. Argument by Master Carlos Necromancy is inherently dangerous. One cannot dabble in it. The simplest spell requires the spilling of blood and immediately begins to corrupt the caster's soul. This is not conjecture but simple fact. It is irresponsible of the guild to teach and thereby encourage a sort of magical study which has proven itself time and time again to bring nothing but terror and misery on the practitioner and world. Counter-argument by Master Grokog all schools of magicka are dangerous to the uninitiated. A simple fireball spell from the School of Destruction can cause great harm when cast by a novice, not only to others but to the mage himself. The School of Mysticism by its very nature forces the practitioner to divorce his mind from logic, to embrace a temporary sort of insanity which one might argue is very like corrupting one's soul. Argument by Master Grokog The guild already permits some forms of necromancy, the schools of Magicka are, as we know, artificial constructs originally formed by Vanis Galarian to divide and thereby simplify study. They have changed many times throughout the years, but at their heart, every master knows they are all linked together. When a student of conjuration summons a guardian ghost, he is touching on the school of necromancy. When a student of enchantment uses a trapped soul, he too may be considered guilty of a black art. The school of mysticism, as I have stated before, has some kinship with necromancy as well. To state that students may not learn the ways of necromancy is to stifle common skills in the other, more historically legitimate, schools of the guild. Counter-argument by Master Carlos Yes, the schools are intertwined, but the standard spells of each school have passed the proof of time. We know what a student of mysticism, properly instructed, will not be permanently harmed by his experience. In many ways, it is a question of extremes. How far we would permit our studies to take us. Necromancy by its nature relies on the practitioner going further into the darkness than is wise, virtually guaranteeing his destruction. It has no place in the Mage's Guild. Conclusion The risks of studying necromancy outweigh its usefulness. The guild does not wish to censor the study of any of its members, but it will not tolerate studies in the black arts, except in limited form for the purpose of combating its evil adherents. This may only be done by rare individuals who have proven themselves both highly skilled and highly cautious, and then only with my express permission and supervision. Afterward, I regret to acknowledge the truth behind the rumor that Master Ulessa Gra Cog was more than an apologist for necromancy. She was a necromancer herself. Upon this revelation, the Knights of the Lamp attended to arrest her at the Guild House in Orsinium, but she made good her escape. We have every confidence in the replacement magister in Orsinium. Though I disagree, I respected her logical reasoning enough to include her arguments in this book, and I see no reason to remove them. It is disappointing, however, to see that her interest in the truth was nothing more than a euphemism for her slavery to the black arts. This unfortunate situation merely illustrates how essential it is for guild members to be wary of the lore of necromancy and be vigilant to its practitioner's infiltration in our mage's guild. <laughs>